This episode of the After Action Review Podcast is brought to you by Seabag Locker Coffee. Look, gimmicks are gimmicky. Flashy videos, guns, and trucks have nothing to do with good quality coffee. Seabag Locker is all about quality. They care about what goes in your cup and how you start your day. From roast to your cup in as little as four days, that's what coffee's all about. Go to SeabagLockerCoffee.com, use promo code AAR, get 10% off your purchase. Buy quality, not gimmicks. SeabagLockerCoffee.com, use promo code AAR, get 10% off your purchase. We're also brought to you by the Java Can, an all-in-one ruggedized coffee brewing system designed by a green beret so that you can make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere from your backyard to a mountaintop in Afghanistan. The Java Can will brew you and your team a fresh cup of coffee no matter where life takes you. Go to thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, and get 10% off your purchase. That's thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, get your 10% off. Live life charged. And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. And welcome to the After Action Review. I'm your host, Rod Rodriguez. Notice that I didn't say podcast. That's right. We are dropping the word podcast slowly from the show's name. I've had more than one person ask me why I have a podcast about old people, you know, like AARP. So we're going to start moving to just the After Action Review. The social media handles will stay the same. You know, it's at the AAR podcast. Hoping I might wrangle in some retiree listeners, maybe, you know, that might be looking for the AARP podcast. Sorry, you know, what's whatever. Mm. I'm just enjoying some delicious sea bag locker coffee right now. So check it out. We're also uh, doing this whole drop the podcast thing at the end of the name because we want to start a an Alexa skill. And uh, for those of you who have the device at home, I apologize if Alexa kind of like set it off. Um, but the whole point is I want to be able to say, uh, hey, Alexa, play the AAR podcast or hey, Alexa, play the after action review. And I want it to be able to do that. Um, in fact, you know, damn, I just set off my own Alexa right now. Um, so if I set off your Alexa, if I set off your device, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But in the future, when you're listening to this podcast at home, I'm going to be, I'm going to be able to help you out. Maybe I could just say, Hey Alexa, subscribe to the after action review podcast. Then it'll be like, boom, you know, it'll say whatever it says. Mine just lit up again. You know, I'm going to turn the. There we go. So I just muted I'm my. I'm still learning about bird questions. Try asking Tell Me a Bird Fact to learn more about them. Alexa is under the impression that I asked her about bird facts. Um, I don't know how she derived anything we just talked about, whether it's the After Action Review, a podcast, hmm. but apparently it's related to birds. I don't know. I'm still getting used to this whole uh, audio world. You know, this is amazing. The world that we're living in right now that I can just say something and it's going to, you know, I get instant feedback. You know, I think that's incredible. You know, I have an Alexa in my garage and I, well, I should, I should stop saying the A word. Okay. So I'm not going to say the A word anymore because in case you have one, it's setting it off and you're probably pissed as hell at me right now. So I have one of these devices, one of these devices in my garage and before, I used to have to fumble around with my phone. So, you know, you, you're working out, you've got to sweat, you got chalk in your hands and all that. And you're trying to set up a timer maybe for your battle ropes or, you know, trying to do tub tub whatever. It, you know, I just, it's, it's a pain in the ass. So what I do is I say, hey, uh, um, I say, hey, device, <laughs> hey, device, set up a timer for 30 seconds. And it does. I can even set it the whole minute. So, so I have a first timer. I'm like, hey, device, set up a timer for 20 minutes. So that's the workout. And then I might say, hey, device, set up a timer for 30 seconds because I'm going to do 30 seconds out of that 20-minute workout doing one thing. And it does. It understands that there's two timers going on. So I love this world, but it can also be very confusing. I know Alexa can get confused with some of the things I'm asking it. Is it an it or her? Do you call it an it? I mean, it has a name. It has a feminine name. Am I assuming gender? I don't know. I don't know. Am I? 
It's all very confusing. I'll tell you what helps stop confusion, and that's on its alpha brain, clinically proven to help with memory, attention, and focus. On it combines cutting edge science, earth grown nutrients, and time tested strategies to help people reach peak performance. Whether you're climbing mountains or biking down them, building businesses or closing sales, make alpha brain your unfair advantage in the world of entrepreneurship. Go to onnit.com. Use coupon code AAR at checkout and get 10% off your purchase. That's coupon code AAR and get 10% off your purchase. Your business is worth it. ONNIT.com. So my guest today is Bennett Tanton. He's a former recon Marine and Army infantryman. He's the host of the Change Your POV podcast. And Monday, I'm sorry, Motivation Monday Volume one. He's also vice president of Battlesite Technologies and uh, chief editor at the Change Your POV Network. His new book, Motivation Monday, Volume One, is now available from Amazon. The link will be in the profile. So, Motivation Monday is also a podcast. Uh, you got to go check out his Change Your POV Network. It is fantastic, folks. On top of all that, uh, he's also a peer to peer specialist. So, his mission is out there to help veterans uh, like me, like yourself, to maneuver the system. That is the VA and and the rest of life. And he's very into uh, veteran entrepreneurship. So it's my honor to have him on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Bennett Danton. My name is Bennett Tanton. I am currently the vice president of a company called Battlesite Technologies, where we basically make glow-in-the-dark crayons for the military. Glow-in-the-dark um, crayons for the military. Yeah. Tell me about Basically. that. What is that exactly? So, all right. So the best way to describe it is, is a chem light that you can write with. It literally, we deconstructed a chem light, micro encapsulated certain pieces of the formula. Right. And uh, so it's little micro capsules full of f- liquid. We mix that with with wax and um, some other ingredients that when you write with it, it breaks those micro capsules and causes the the same reaction that when you crack a light stick and shake it, the same reaction happens. This just happens in little micros all across what you're writing. That sounds pretty cool. Now for a kid, that sounds like that'd be fun to play with, uh, you know, at the house with the kiddos. Tell me about the application in the, uh, the military. How are they going to be using this? So we can, we can, the biggest kicker is we can make it an infrared. So so we can um, imagine in a a direct action type sense, like you're going into a house and, uh, or or a building and clearing that building. Well, as we all know, when you go through that building, you usually mark the doors that in the rooms that you've gone into and cleared, right? Now, who knows? We have some varied SOP from unit to unit on, chem lights with rigorous tape and, 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 you know, 550 cord wrapped around a and handle or thrown over a door. Right. Well, with this product, you can literally just mark an X on the door and move on. And it's in, and you, in, you can just see it in infrared. So basically it, it, you're not going to be able to see it with the naked eye. No, correct. Now we can make it with that in the, in, the, in so it can't be seen with the naked eye as well. Um, but the product that we're working on that we're, Focusing on right now is called the Mark IR, which is the um, name of the infrared marker. So, yeah. So, are you the brain? It's a really cool thing? product. I'm part of it. Uh, mainly, one of the kickers is is it is a Air Force technology. It's a technology that was developed by the Air Force. The the encapsulation part of it was perfected by the Air Force, and then what my partner and I, Nick Ripplinger, did is we came across this technology we licensed it from the air force and then decided to make a crayon out of it so yeah man i you know i'm I'm part of it i'm half of the brains behind it but not the chemistry part that actually created the (laughs) you know where all the the magic secret sauce yeah the secret sauce how did this idea come to you what what prompted this uh this crayon for the military well, basically, it was it was my buddy Nick calls me at like eleven o'clock at night. One random, it was like August, so it was almost a year ago, um, and says, "All right, 
what if I could tell you that we could make a crayon or make a chem light that um, that glows and you can, or like a chem light that you can write with? And I was like, well, shit, you could use this for this application, that application, and just, you know, went down the line. And he's like, well, you want to do it? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So the next thing you know, like a year later, now we're, we're selling to everybody. I mean, the way it's getting there, we have right. uh, contracts in the military and made a ton of connections and yeah, man, foreign countries, everything. So, so you're it's pretty awesome. You're the guy with a lot of different pokers in the fire. Um, you've Dude, got tons, ridiculous tons. tons. You've got the chem light. Uh, what, what is the device called by the way? It's called the Mark IR. The Mark IR. So you have the Mark IR. You have a successful podcast. You have a book that just got that's getting released, or it's gotten released. Um, it's gotten released. So yeah. it's released now. People can go pick it up. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But you know, it, it's really difficult for me to pick where among all of these different things that you've got going on, and, and along with uh, and you have a nine to five as well, right? Yes. So uh, on top of that, a nine to five job. Um, where we should start with an AAR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pose this to you. Tell me about one of the major challenges that you've had, uh, a setback or something that you really had to, uh, a hurdle you really had to jump over when it comes to any of these things that you've been up to. Well, I, I think the biggest, I think it, it's not, and, and it's a hurdle, but it's not really a hurdle. It's people always say, focus on one thing. Right. People right. always say, um, do that one thing, do it the best that you can and then move on to the next. Like, don't get shiny object syndrome. Don't be a squirrel, you know, and, and all this other stuff. And that doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So so the biggest obstacle that I face is, yes, I have to be able to to be judicious about what I what poker I decide to put into the fire. But um so the, the the obstacle that I face, the biggest obstacle I face is twofold. One of it is is having that really good idea and then executing on that idea, right? So I think that's an obstacle that a lot of people come across is that they're afraid to execute because they might have something else going on too. Um, and they, they might be like, well, I don't really have the time and I don't have the, this and I don't have whatever. But it's one of those things like, you have to be judicious about it, but if you have an idea and now's the time, you'll find the time. So execute on that, right? Regardless of whether or not it's, it might not, your, your sanity might, uh, you know, get tested, but it's one of those things that there's no time like the present because in six months, how many times have you heard? Six months ago, I had that idea and I should have done it, but I didn't. That's right. Because people think that their time's taken, but it's not. It's not. I mean, I'm sorry, but if you know what's going on with like Game of Thrones and like you, you know what's going on with like six different shows on Netflix, you're wrong. I, you're not wrong. That's your choice. But don't bellyache when the person comes up with the same idea you had six months from now. Right? Yeah. yeah so it, that's, that's an obstacle in itself is people don't give themselves enough credit of what they actually can achieve. You know, it's funny. I hear the term, um, you know, live your truth being thrown out there a lot lately, live your truth, live your truth. But I don't think people understand that when they say, I don't have time, that's not the truth. <laughs> not at all. That's not the truth. Um, it's not. I mean, I do, I have two, I have a podcast, a podcast network, I have four kids, four daughters at that, a wife, a house. I mean, God, we, we all know what it's like if you own your own home, you know, that's a full-time job in itself half the time, right? So mm -hmm. a home, a full-time job, um, working with veterans, and I am the vice president of this other company where I do a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. I'm not really the face of the company, but... Um, you know, I do most of the purchasing. I do, I, I do all the, do a lot of dirty work. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes down to if, if we didn't all do our jobs, we wouldn't have anything done. 
Um, so I just challenge folks to execute, like stop talking about it. I mean, what, if, if you t- tell me, tell me really quick about some of the experiences you've had with the government. So I know a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, they've got this idea, they've got a product, they want to get it out into the hands of uh, the military or different government agencies. But everybody says that the most difficult aspect of this is working in the the world of government contracts and all this stuff. Tell me about your experience in that realm. It honestly hasn't been that bad. Um, I think it's because Nick and I don't take, we move very quickly and we don't, we don't accept the bureaucratic red tape uh, and, and we just don't, we, we push the con you know, the people that, that write the contracts, we stay in constant communication with those folks, literally calling them daily and being like, so what's going on? What's going on? Why isn't the Colonel signed it? Why hasn't that, I mean, literally just being so annoying that they have no choice. The easiest way for them to get rid of us is to, to just do it. Right. Mm-hmm. So we all know, the red tape bureaucratic crap can take forever. Right. It's really unnecessary. I'm sorry. It's unnecessary. It's part of the reason that government is so inefficient. So give them a lesson in efficiency straight up. So you played you aggressive. Know, if you get yeah. this done, right. So if you get this done, we can make money. And guess what? The ROI on that R and D that you guys did where we are it, we are your return on investment. So let's get this done. Right. So in addition, um, in addition to working this, this, uh, this angle with the government, working contracts, you mentioned you had a podcast and a podcast network, which kind of is going to lead, lead us into your book. Tell us about your podcast and your podcast network. All right. So the, the one podcast um, is Cigars and Sea Stories. It's a Marine-centric veteran podcast that basically is a lot of fun to do. It's a lot of jackassery and um, you were on that podcast. I was on that podcast. Yes. So, so um, we have a good time. We talk about, you know, just what good things veterans are doing to add value to the, to the community. Right. So that's, that's that podcast Um, laid in with that is also another book that was written called the five paragraph business plan, which is a brainchild of my partner, uh, mainly my partner, but I had I had a little to do with it. Um, uh, Mike Penny and we wrote the five paragraph business plan, which allows veterans and veteran entrepreneurs to. It's an intuitive way to write a business plan. We all know the five paragraph order. We all know how it's laid out. So we took that and a business plan, and basically it's the redheaded stepchild of that. So that's that podcast. Then we have the Change Your POV Podcast Network, which we have five shows currently on um and the book motivation monday was birthed out of that because one of the podcasts that we have eddie lazary and i is called motivation monday and um it's a motivational show where it's it's under five minutes an episode and we take a motivational quote we give our take on it and send it out to the world right so the book is based on that. So it's based on the quote with our take, but on the opposite page, we give the reader the uh, the ability to write their own take on it. Maybe journal a little about what that what that quote means to them, and then also at the bottom of that page, there's a QR code where you can take your smartphone and scan it and listen to that episode right then, if if you would like. Um, and that's the basic premise of the book that was just released is it's like a 30 day workbook and, uh, there's some really good quotes in there and some really good points that Eddie and I both touch on and, uh, we're pretty proud of it. And it's basically the first of five. Mm -hmm. We've, we've got enough episodes to do five of these books. So tell me about what, what quote from this first book really stands out to you? For me, my it's in a, it's one of my favorite quotes. Uh, is the it's a quote from Gandhi that "Be the change you want to see in the world." And that quote to me, man, speaks volumes. It, it's 
it's so easy and we hear it day in and day out in this day and age is people belly aching about it should be like this or it should be like that or this is how you know this would make sense if we did it this way and instead of complaining about it why don't go out and be that go be the change that you want to see in the world right so if you want the world to be in a better place do better um if you really think that you're, you know, if you have the answers, then go run for office, man. Do it. Just shut up and do it. Right. So it's, it's uh, too often I hear so many people just talk and talk and talk and talk. And I, I say, be, execute, go do what we did when we were in the military and make th- things happen. Um, don't take th- it is what it is. You know, how many times do we hear that? Right. Um, we hear that a lot. Sometimes, sometimes it is what it is, but very rarely, I think that's an acceptable answer. Well, do you think um, that that in that sense that that Gandhi quote is really about, you know, when it is what it is, making it better internally? Like you become the better part of that. You don't have to be um, part of the problem. Absolutely, yeah. Don't be part of the. Don't be the part of the problem. Be part of the solution. It's like it's like in, a, in an effectively running business. Too often, it's in the military, right? How many times do we hear this? Somebody's bitching about the way that we do something, except for they don't ever come up with an answer that's better, right? Come up with something that's better. If it doesn't work and you have a way to do it better, then let's do it that way. But you have to you have to think about it and how. We institute that and come up with a solution that makes this problem better, right? I mean, that's entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship mainly is about us finding products and creating systems that work better than the previous ones, right? That can work with us. That can work with computers. That can work with everything, you know? Um, Just figure out a way that works better and do it. What challenges you in that respect? What are some things that that challenge you to be the be- to be the change? So you know, sometimes you you really question on whether you're being an, a decent person. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. have. That's a it's a it's a battle because um, sometimes you just want to say "f it." I you know screw them all, screw everybody. They they're all a bunch of idiots or they're all ignorant or whatever. And, um, my biggest challenge with that is really, um, looking inside my heart and evaluating where I'm at with that. Like if, if I'm doing things from my heart, I'm usually doing it the right way. I I don't necessarily, sometimes my head gets out of line, right? My head space and timing gets off. Right. But, um, if I look in my heart and how my gut feels and really look over things that I'm saying or doing and, and, you know, do, do that self-reflection, um, for, for a quick second or two. Cause I think a lot of times we, we just react out of emotion instead of actually saying, man, is is this the right way to handle this? Um, and I know, you know, sometimes you have to make snap decisions, but that's where this type of exercise, the self self reflection, is works that muscle, works that heart, works that heart mind connection where you you are doing the right things, um, making the right decisions that aren't hurting other folks. If if you can do it without hurting other folks, right? It's it's does funny that, that you does that answer. Your no, question? It, it does, and it does because uh, I it makes me think about some of the. Of groups that I've seen form on Facebook uh, around entrepreneurship, and they seem like there are a lot of veterans out there who are creating businesses that have no heart and soul, that that really don't do anything other than try and sell, sell, sell. Um, I feel like those individuals are looking to change. They're looking for change in their lives, and I get it. Financial change is a huge thing, but mm-hmm. – Without some type of reflection that you're talking about, without the ability to see I'm part of something that's that's bigger than uh, a check, 
maybe right. maybe you're you're actually part of a bigger problem in and of itself. Right, because you can do both. I think we it's tougher. Yeah, I think it's tougher to do. It both. is. It's harder. It's definitely tougher to do both. But you know what? Doing both is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, it's one of those. It's one of those sayings too, which you hear a lot of people say. But I don't know if a lot of people really act on it. Is uh, rising tides raise all ships? And in the veteran community, I, I hear a lot of that. Um. But there's a lot of like clicky, like, I don't know, man. You know, there is an undercurrent where sometimes we're our own worst enemies, right? I don't get play. I don't play in that, that, that realm. I, I just won't. I won't do it. Um, I, I have business partners and friends that don't like other people. But I, I play well with everyone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, as long as you're a moral person at the end of the day, and you haven't wronged me or, you know, raped kids and, you know, done some heinous shit. <laughs> you know, right, right. That, that where you're just at the end of the day, you're trying to feed your family. I can, I can probably do work with you, right? Um, I, I think people have an, a tendency to take shit too personally. Um, and it's hard. It is hard, man. It's, it's hard. This game is not easy, as you know. Right. Um, but I think that if you're doing it for the right reasons and being rich overnight just doesn't happen, not effectively, not, not long lasting, um, wealth, right? Right. It can't be done in a day. Like people think that they're going to start a podcast and within a year they're going to be John Lee Dumas or, or, uh, you know, Joe Rogan And, and no, it doesn't work that way. Like I've been in the game with podcasting now I'm on something close to 900 hours of podcasting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've been at this Um, for two years. Right. And that's what, at least an episode a week, probably ish. I do an episode every two, but there's countless hours of episodes that I've never released because they were just (laughs) because. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, damn. That's kind of rough, or maybe you can repurpose <laughs> it, repurpose it for something else. Right? right, right. So it's one of those things like we we look to create evergreen content that um, speaks truth and and is good for the soul, and it's funny if you need the, it to be funny, and and just you know lead it lead from the heart uh, and and be good, and yeah, that kind of gets woo wooey, but. Man, I couldn't do it with a conscience that, that that wasn't like that. You know, I, I don't we don't really have it's not about sponsorship for us. It's it's about helping our brothers and sisters get well and have a laugh and learn. It right? sounds to me so. like like entrepreneurship has maybe changed you or it's had an effect on you um, in a rather positive light. Oh yeah. Um, and, and also because I've, I'm also a peer support specialist. So I, I do a lot of counseling with, with veterans and, um, you know, I just, just the other day I was going through numbers and, uh, uh turns out I've helped 150 veterans get jobs. Um, you know, just within the last few years. That's impressive. Man. Um, and, you know, like a real employment, not yeah. like, you know, uh, a part time job at McDonald's or whatever. So it's one of those things like I've I have definitely become kinder and gentler uh, because I look at the world differently because I came from being a hammer. And everything was a nail <laughs> and it's not that it's just the world's not that way. Um, and I am not that hammer. I might be a hammer, uh, but, you know, I I don't get pulled out of the, that, that part of me doesn't get pulled out of the tool belt very often (laughs) anymore. You know, um, it can, if it needs to be, but, but you know, I, I think about my, I think about how my actions affect people before I do them for the most part. So you've, because there's just too much, there's too much hate and BS within our, within the world, let alone our own community. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, you get on some of these Facebook pages and the way that, the way that we talk to each other is just, 
awful. I, and, and this isn't like inter rivalry banter where, you know, we expect that, but this is like one guy says something and the next thing, you know, it's, you know, ah, you were a truck driver. What the hell do you know? Or, you know, it's just, the, you know, enough. It's not high school. Well, you're, so, you're right about the clicks, and I think you're absolutely right about some of the disrespectful comments we, we throw at each other. Unfortunately, I think a lot of it is politically filled. Uh, we're, we're living in a, in a very interesting, very divisive time right now where yeah. um, it seems that it, you're in an environment where everybody want, everybody's taking sides. And if you're not on someone else's team – you're going to be berated. You're dumb. You're stupid yeah, for not right. having their perspective or their lens. And I think that's ridiculous. To me, that's just ignorance and stupidity itself. Um, I heard a quote the other day, and I don't remember who it was from, but ignorance can be rectified with education, right? But true stupidity is defending your ignorance. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, that I mean, sounds, if you let that sink in, that's right? Legit. That's it, a legit. That's a legit quote, right? I don't remember who said it. it wasn't me. Oh, we're getting credit. We're it crediting. We're crediting you right now. Um. <laughs> so, I mean, how often do you see people standing in their red, whether they're red or blue or green or blue or you know whatever freaking color you want to freaking affiliate yep. yourself with politically? And you have no idea what the hell you're talking about or why you, you don't know why immigration is a problem. You don't know why illegal immigration is a problem, let alone why we need people coming to the country or we don't, it, you know, you don't even know why you don't know. All you think is you fall under the, the umbrella of everyone should come in or no one should come in. It, you know, and it's, it's not that cut and dry. This is a complex issue. It really is. Um, well, isn't that the you know, problem is that a lot of these issues uh, to include to include entrepreneurship, a, a lot of these things are complex. And, I, and I've always said there is a difference between something that is complex and complicated. You know, yes, it, it, there, there's a difference between those two things. And I think that people find uh, very complex issues to be too hard too time consuming. So you take the easy way out. You find somebody with the loud platform that's going to hoot and holler, whether on the right or the left, and you just kind of fall under that wing. You, you just kind of jump in with that crowd. It's easy. That yeah, way you don't have to you think. You pick that tribe, right? Yeah, you yeah, pick you your tribe. You don't have to think about it. Right. You let someone else do right. the thinking for you. And that's what it is. It's easy. Um, but it's that doesn't make it right, you no, know, by any stretch not. of the imagination. No. And, and, I have a big problem with that, with the two-party system and, and the, you know, yeah, it, this could be a whole nother show. Well, I think, <laughs> you know, you know it, 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 shows. I, I think it, it boils it down to, it's also bad business. Yeah, it's also bad it's business. It's really bad business. It's really bad business. And I love it how, you know, you, you have people that literally dumb it down to the point that it's like capitalism's bad and, and for some reason the – um Republican Party falls in with the capitalism thing, which is total bullshit. Yeah. Um, there's just as many Democrats that are, you know, acting capitalists, um, but but we never talk about it, right? Um, our, our entire system is based off of capitalism. And you know what? You wouldn't have what we have if it wasn't for that. Um, that doesn't mean that all other systems and ideas are wrong. They just don't work as well. That's true. They just don't. And even at 75%, I'd say our our system, our current system in this republic right now is working at about 75% effective. Um, it's still better than other systems at 100%. So, Well, there's really no better system for not, entrepreneurship. Our, right. our system's not made to run perfectly either. And, and you know what? Here's what it comes down to, too, is we need the Republicans. We need the right and we need the left. Because they balance each other. Because most people live here in the middle. These are the people that are so loud. And what we need to do is the people that are right here need to help control some of the stupid stuff that's going on out here. And just be be our be what we are. And that's Americans. 
So do you um, ever get tempted I, to get political on your podcast? Yeah, I, actually, um, it's funny that you say that. I'm about to go full bore into another podcast that is very political. How do you um, feel about that? It's it's a little scary. It's not scary. Scary is not the right word because we're we're taking it and looking at it from a truly objective lens because I'm one way, my my co-host is going to be another. And we're not really like red and blue. It, it's not really like that. We're more purple. Um, but we're going to take separate issues and really look at it from both sides and then kind of let it mesh its way out and then come down to what what did what does the data tell us really works cuz people too often ignore the facts right there are measurable facts that we know about most of these issues right that aren't manipulated that aren't uh, twisted um, that come from good sources, right? But isn't somebody going to argue with you that no matter what source you you bring, that source is skewed? No matter where you pull your data from, someone's going to argue that your data is somehow – Well, they can argue that, but show me where it is skewed. Show me how it's skewed. So I am I want to engage the audience and I want to force them. that They can say I'm full of shit, but tell me why. And don't tell me it's because of – what give me now? See, um, I, I'm a big proponent, and I, I'm open. I am totally open to all comers, to all opinions, and you know what? Changed my opinion many times on things because things have been brought to my attention that make a lot of sense. Plus, there's been valid proof that this is the way it is, right? Um, so. I, I, this is a show that's going to challenge the audience to be involved and be involved intelligently, not with your emotion. It does get emotional, but you gotta, you gotta work through it or else, you know what? We're never going to get any of these problems solved because people get too emotional to it. People get too attached to it and it, they, they, it makes them irrational. Are you at all concerned? It makes them irrational. Are, are you at all concerned about the perspective the the, percep the perception that some of your other listeners maybe some of your other readers or even um people in the business realm may have of you now and that how how it may change if they hear your political views do, do you no because i'm still the same person at, well i'm saying uh, well a lot of people may not know where you stand politically i don't and i listen to your show and and i enjoy a lot of your content i don't know where you stand politically maybe a lot of people right. don't so when we hear you say whatever it is and you say i stand on this side of this issue does it concern you at all that this could affect your other business or your other listeners or yeah, I mean, of course, but it's one of those things too that if I'm true to if I'm true to me and and you if you're going to judge me because of the way that I perceive or the way that I do live my life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or if you're going to not do business with me because of that, that's on you. Right. I can't affect that either way. But being quiet about it is is anymore is not an option for me. Um, I, I think that I am a very unique, and I can tell you, some of my really close friends could probably tell you that I'm pretty. I'm more of a uniting person than a right. dividing person, and my views make sense. They're not based on radical craziness. They're based on what's actually proven to work and make life better for people. They're not social radicalness. They're not conservative radicalness, right? They're common sense down the pretty down the middle um, solutions that frankly, our constitution was based on then you're, in, in a lot of forms and fashions. And then you're going to have the people you know saying, what I mean? then you have the people saying, well, damn it, Bennett, pick a side. You can't ride the middle. Yeah, the whole and, way. I, and I say, and I say, you're, you're out of your mind. <laughs> shut up. Then you're part of the issue, you know, read so. it. You can mark it on the wall with your IR 
thing and be like, yes, correct. Eat it. Get out of here. Nobody wants to hear that. Sure. I'll be honest with you. I've had my I've had my um my thoughts on being a little more politically oriented in, in, in maybe some of my podcasts. And I've actually found myself steering away from politically uh, sensitive conversations in my podcast simply because I just wasn't ready for to, to, to go down that road. I don't know if it's cowardice on my part. <laughs> maybe I'm a little afraid to go down that road because honestly, I don't think I am the most um, educated person when it comes to a lot of these issues. I often have to go ask other people when when I see these things on the news and of course you get that the uh the knee jerk heartstring reaction like oh I'm angry about that because the way it was presented it sounds like I should be angry about that but before I <laughs> right but before I get too wrapped around the axle I find myself calling up a friend of mine who's very far left and I'll call up a friend of mine who's very far right and I'm like explain this to me give me your facts and they present it to me and I kind of have to make my own my own opinion based off of that, but yeah. And you know what? Every one of us should make our own opinion. Like too often, too often people walk into a voting booth and they're like, who should I vote for? Yeah. And they vote from because they have an R or a D next to their name. That's not okay. I mean, if, if you really want to be involved in it, you don't have to, but you have to be okay with the way things are going. Then if you're not going to be a participant, I mean, Man, nowadays, it, all right, so the last presidential election, we had something close to 50% voter turnout, right? Local level, though, I mean, the people that really affect your life are like your mayor, your councilman, your school board, yeah, those nobody, people. Nobody knows those people 25%, dude. Yeah, nobody I mean, knows who those guys are. I guarantee you, I, 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 I challenge every one of your listeners to, to name every single one of the people on their school board. Ooh. They can't do it. They can't. Yeah, same so, here. <laughs> I so don't know who right. they are. I have no idea. I've been here for but a year. Those people, but those people truly affect your your children's lives. That's true. It's a good point. So focus more on your freaking community than the, the national scene. I mean, yes, it matters. It does. But if you want to make real change and be a part of something that's bigger than yourself, be part of your freaking community. Oh, you yeah. don't even know who your neighbor are, is half the time. You know, it. it yeah. It, yeah, that's I mean, that's. That it's kind very, of speaks volumes. Very, yeah, it speaks volumes it, but, about but who we true. are now, yeah. especially today. We have all this what what is it saying? All this technology and we've never been further apart. You know, it yeah. should have brought us together closer. We should know a whole lot more. It kind of goes back to my kids. The kids are always asking me a question about, you know, science or the, the politics. And I'm like, you have Google. Why aren't you using the tools at your right. fingertips to actually look up Not this right. information instead of asking and I but you know, I'm just as guilty though. I'm just yeah, as but guilty. You have, you have every ounce of knowledge ever attained by the human race at your fingertips at this point. I got, I've also got podcasts. Whatever I need to know. If I don't know it off of Joe Rogan, it's probably not worth knowing. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> He's the what, – what I heard him refer to as the Oprah for men. Um, yeah. Which, so, which that, that's another one of those things. It's a good point though. Um I do take time to listen because we have what's called found time, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you commute to work on a, on a, and drive or whatever, listen to a podcast, do, do something like that. So I do listen to Joe Rogan. I, I think that that's one of the things that's kind of changing the game is podcasting Absolutely. because we're able to have these conversations in long form, um, in long form you know, base where we're actually able to sit and have a conversation. It's not a six minute soundbite on Hannity. Right. We're actually hearing a three hour conversation right. with Joe and his right. guests. So and how can I, right. Or you and I talking about the situation right now, how I couldn't go on, on Cavuto and talk about what I'm talking now because I'd have six minutes to do it. Or if you did, they pulled like 30 seconds out of it. Just the, exactly. Just, and just they'd the probably part misquote where, me anyway. Uh, exactly. Just the part that sounds salacious and juicy right. and they can throw it out there right. like, oh, he's a freaking he yeah, hates immigrants. Ben Tanton is a racist. He, <laughs> like, he, what? He's a racist immigrant hater. <laughs> What's Wait, going what? On? Never said anything <laughs> like that. I actually, <laughs> you know, I actually think exactly the opposite. So it's bizarre. It really so your is. new book, 
is morning motivation Monday. Motivation Monday. What do you want the readers to walk away uh, feeling, knowing, absorbing from this book? That it truly t- just take a look at it. And I, I challenge you 30 days, do, do the exercise for 30 days and see if you don't come out the other side of it thinking and knowing more about yourself than you've ever known. You know what I mean? It, it, it's can be very self-reflective. It can be what you want it to be. Um, I really encourage people to, um, straight up buy the book (laughs) and then use it as a tool and, um, just help make their lives more you know, mission oriented, more add more value to your community, and who, to your family, to and, yourself. And really, who can't use a little more motivation? I know I can. Right. And <laughs> I know I do every day, man. I, I wake up and I'm like, God, you know, there but I but days. I do it. Absolutely. I do it and, and just go. Where can we find this book? So there's two places you can really, and, and both, both lead to Amazon. So you can go to Amazon and order it straight from Amazon motivation Monday. There is a paperback and a year and a ebook, but I, I say you buy the paperback because then you can actually write in it. Uh, buying the ebook is kind of, I don't know, you know, necessarily why we created it, but I guess some people don't have the ability to write. So we, we, did it for everybody. Um, I am not a fan of the vote. ebook. I am not a fan of the ebook. I want to hold yeah, it. I want to touch right. it. You know, I like pages in my hands. And to Especially write it. With workbooks, you're so, right? Yeah, you're supposed right. to write in your books. That's why these margins right. exist. Exactly. So, or you can go to changeyourpov.com forward slash motivation Monday books and you can get it through there too. Fantastic. So, uh, I know after this, people are going to be curious about your podcast. If they're not already listening to it, they need to jump on it. Subscribe, uh, change your POV. That's the network and the pot. That's a podcast, right? Change your POV. Cause I yeah, listen it's, to cigar it's like stories. the flagship podcast, but right. then there's, um, you know, there's a couple other podcasts, changing hearts and minds, uh, headspace and timing, neophyte in the woods, motivation Monday. There, there's a whole, and then there's some little, uh, like we did a series on Band of Brothers, which was amazing, and leadership lessons from Band of Brothers, and, and a couple other things. It's great stuff going on with all of our hosts, Jeff Adamek, Dwayne France, just amazing guys, Andrew McDowell. Um, they just put out a lot of good content, and uh, yeah, man, check it out, seriously. It, it's one of the best-kept secrets, like a lot of people don't realize, and then when they do, you've got enough you could listen, literally listen to a different episode every day for a year and you wouldn't reach the end of it. So, And where do they go to find all of these wonderful shows? Changeyourpov.com. Changeyourpov.com. Folks, you got to change your POV. That's, that's what it's all about. POV's point of view, because I know some people laugh and go, POV, that's a car. No point of view. No, change that's your a, POV. <laughs> no, that's a POS. Uh, most people are probably driving a POS. You want to change your POV. You definitely want to change your point of view. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, we are recording this. Uh, I'm in my uh, brand new. Uh, well, not br- it's brand new to me. It's yeah, my. Man. Yeah, it's, it's my looking good studio. though. Like I can see the the noise canceling. Oh, nice. Dude. It's looking I'm, nice. It's I'm looking loving good. it here. I, I, I my um my kiddo moved out to another room. So I took this one gotcha. and it's a, uh, it's tiny, but it, it works. It's my yeah. little studio space. Um, right. But yeah, thanks for, and, and you're, you're at work right now. So we're both kind of on the grind uh, and that's yeah, entrepreneurship man. folks. That is how it is done. Uh, so make sure you go, you guys, you guys go check out uh change your POV.com uh, mo- uh, motivation Monday. Yep. That's the book. And uh, we're probably going to do a giveaway. I'm thinking giveaway. I'm, Feeling, I'm feeling giveaway, feeling a, man. Feeling I'm feeling giveaway. like I want to give away a book or two. So, all right, uh, I think that's what we're gonna do. I can so, do that. so stay tuned to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and make sure you're checking out the Change Your POV Network. There's some great content down there, buddy. Thanks again, and uh, let's talk soon, man. Yeah, man, for sure. Thanks all for right. having me on. Thank you. 
All right, folks, that was Bennett Tanton. Great guy. Love his podcast network. It was honestly the changer POV that got me thinking there was a place in the veteran podcast sphere for me. That that Mark IR also, you know, that thing we, we just finished talking about, uh, the, the glow stick that can write on walls. I, I already see Joe's drawing IR dicks across fobs and objectives around the world. But you know what? Joe's going to be Joe. And God bless them for it. But while they're doing that, they can also listen to the Change Your POV Network. There are amazing programs on that network, folks. Uh, they're not always over the top stuff. I know there's a lot of that out there. Uh, but, the, the, you know, for example, like the Change Your POV podcast itself, it, it's it got a lot of different topics, great guests, um, good discussion. It's thought provoking. You know, it's not just, you know, gee whiz bang, uh, uh, buzzwords and, and triggered and, you know, all this other stuff it is it, thought provoking. And that's what we're missing today. I think we're not giving things enough thought and that's what they do on the change your POV. So go check it out. The POV network, all those note, all these, uh, links are going to be down there in the show notes, folks. Don't forget to check out the sponsors and affiliates who make this show possible. Sea bag locker coffee, roast to your cup in as little as four days. Seabaglocker.com. Use promo code AAR. You're going to get 10% off your purchase. Seabaglocker.com. Uh, the Java Can. It's a ruggedized coffee brewing system designed by Green Beret so that you can make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere life takes you. The Javacan.com. Use promo code AAR. You're going to get 10% off of that purchase as well. Live life charged. And of course, on its Alpha Brain clinically proven to enhance memory, attention, and focus. Go to onnit.com and use coupon code AAR. You're going to get 10% off your purchase. All right. Next episode. Next episode is episode 50. Five zero. My guest is Ultimate Fighter 16 winner and U.S. Army active duty sergeant first class Colton Smith. I told you I would make episode 50 special and believe me, I delivered. I'm bringing the heat. You don't want to miss this episode. One last thing. We are giving away three, tres, three copies of Motive, Monday Motivation Volume 1. Three copies signed by Bennett himself. So watch out for details on that on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you like, listen, subscribe, and share this podcast with anybody and everyone you think needs to hear it, which is pretty much everyone. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and it's a little ad sign. A little, little A, little ad sign. The AAR podcast. Boom. Check me out on Twitter. I've been active on Twitter. In fact, today I just had the rock like one of my tweets and Mark Cuban, or at least maybe Mark Cuban's people and the rock's assistant you know, three times removed from him, whatever made me feel good. All right. That's it. That does it for this, uh, for this episode. I will see you at episode 50. Thank you.